Hey hey guys, Adam504 here for the first video of a new series where we look at the performance differences between similar tiered aircraft. I call this new series the Battle of the Graphs. In this video I'll compare the performance of the best 5.7 BR fighters that don't have an airspawn for the US, UK, Germany and Italy. The aircraft we'll be comparing today are the F4U4B, the Spitfire Mark 14, the BF109K4 and the G56. These aircraft are the best 5.7 BR fighters that each nation can field without an airspawn. These aircraft will be, will be compared in the five following metrics. Speed, climb, turn, roll, and maneuvering energy retention. At the end of the video, I'll recap on the results and conclude with some remarks. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. First off, let's test the speed of each aircraft between 0 and 9 kilometers of altitude. Tests were done at 0% radiators and with a constant 20 minute fuel weight. I stay a long time at a given altitude to get an accurate reading. The testing for the F4U4B took over 30 minutes, for example. Here is the speed as a function of altitude graph for the four aircraft. The green line is the F4U4B, the blue is the Spitfire Mark 14, the black is the BF109K4, and the brown is the G56. This color code will be the same throughout this video. We'll now compare the speeds at low, medium, and high altitude to get a better idea of the idle altitudes of these aircraft. At low altitude, between 0 and 3 km, the F4U4B is the fastest, followed by the K4. The Spitfire and the G56 are the slowest. Between 3 and 6 km, the K4 takes the lead, followed by the F4U4B, the G56, and then the Spitfire. At high altitude, the K4 is the fastest, although the Spitfire passes it at 8 km, followed by the G56, and then the F4U4B. The F4U4B lags behind the other fighters at high altitude. One thing that's interesting to note are the speed curves for the F4U4B and the Spitfire. These dips indicate that the supercharger gear switch is close to that altitude and that's where the Axis fighters with their variable speed superchargers will have the highest speed difference with the Allied fighters. This time climb was tested. Climb tests were done at every kilometer between 0 and 9 kilometers by finding the time it takes to climb 200 meters. For example, for the rate of climb at 1 kilometer, I found the time it took to go from 900 meters to 1100 meters and divided 200 meters by that time to find the climb rate. As usual, the aircraft were loaded with a constant 20 minute fuel weight and used 0% radiators. The F3-4B and the K4 climbed at 270 km per hour IS, while the Spitfire and G56 climbed at 260 km per hour IS. Here are the climb results. Between 0 and 3 km, the Spitfire and the K4 are approximately equal. The F3-4B starts off strong, stronger than the G56, but drops off rapid, rapidly because of its relatively low supercharger gear switch altitude. Between 3 and 6 km, the Spitfire is the fastest climbing, followed closely by the K4 and the G56, with the F3-4B in last place. Between 6 and 9 km, the Spitfire has the decisive climb advantage, followed by the G56, then the K4, and then the F4-4B with barely more than half the Spitfire's climb at that altitude. Once again, the dips in climb performance of the Spitfire and F3-4B indicate that the supercharger gear switch altitude is close, and that's where the Axis fighters will have the highest climb difference. Time to test the sustained turn time and turn radius. Again, every aircraft has a constant 20 minute fuel weight and uses 0% radiators. The sustained turn is reached when thrust equals drag, which implies no change in speed. After the sustained turn is reached, I found the time it takes to make a full turn, using the aircraft carrier as a reference point. With the turn time and the turn speed, it's trivial to calculate the circumference of the turn circle and the turn radius. Here are the turn radius results, which were predictable. The Spitfire has the tightest turn by a decent margin, followed by the G56, and then the F4E4B, which has a very small advantage over the K4. The turn times follow the same trend as the turn radius, but with a bigger gap between the F4E4B and the K4. This can be explained by the higher power to rate ratio and maximum lift coefficient of the K4, while the F4U4B has a lower wing loading and lower induced drag, 
which explain the turn radius similarity and the F44B turn time advantage. In a medium high speed turn starting at 550 km per hour, it essentially repeats the same result as the sustained turn radius. The smaller line is the sustained turn radius while the thicker line is the high speed turn radius. The G56 has a small improvement in turn radius while the K-Force turn radius becomes slightly worse, and the Spitfire and F44B's radius don't change. Next is the roll rate. Roll rate varies with speed and altitude, so a specific speed and altitude was chosen to do the roll tests. The footage from all four aircraft are synced so that they start their second roll at the same time. As you saw, the F-44B easily outrolls the opposition with nearly twice the roll rate. The K-4 is in second place, then the G-56, and the Spitfire is in last place. Last test, but not least, the maneuvering energy retention test. This is a measure of how much energy the aircraft loses in a 360 degree turn with a starting speed of 550 km per hour. I put a link in the description for more details regarding this test. By inputting the initial and final speeds and altitudes, you can find the amount of energy the aircraft lost to complete their 360 degree turn, and the aircraft which loses the least energy has the best MER. With and without turn time compensation, the G56 loses the least energy, followed by the F44B, then the K4, and the Spitfire. Here are the final results. The table ranks each aircraft from 1 to 5 in each metric, 5 being the best and 1 being very bad. It repeats what I already said, so I'll go over it quickly. The F44B has the speed advantage at low altitude, and the Spitfire and G56 are relatively slow in comparison. At medium and high altitude, the K4 is the fastest. In climb, the Spitfire is the best overall, and the F44B is the worst. The Spitfire wins again in turn radius and turn time, F44B wins in roll, and G56 wins in maneuvering energy retention. The sum at the end does not show which aircraft is the best, since each metric wasn't properly weighted. The metrics aren't all equal in usefulness. It was just interesting to see what the sum was. Time for my remarks. The performance of these four aircraft are fairly balanced, in the sense that they all have strengths and weaknesses in different areas, which makes it interesting. The US UK combo looks particularly strong with a turn, climb, and speed advantage at low altitude and turn and climb advantage everywhere else. The Air 4 bs altitude performance is lacking, leaving only the Spitfire as competitive at high altitude. While I did cover the majority of the important performance aspects of these fighters, a few key things were left out. The fuel consumption of the Spitfire and K4 on WEP would require them to load 30 minutes of fuel to have similar loader time as the f 4 b which would decrease their performance somewhat. Also, the cooling drag isn't equal between these planes. The F-44B has the lowest cooling drag, and the Spitfire probably has the highest cooling drag. Other aspects of performance such as low speed performance, flaps, dive, linear energy retention, and high speed maneuverability weren't evaluated either. Finally, armament wasn't compared, and that's a significant factor in usefulness in random matches. All in all, these four planes are fairly balanced between each other in my opinion. Let me know which aircraft you would like to see featured in the next Battle of the Graphs. Like and subscribe for more, and thanks for watching.